Well, it's my lucky day. I've just touched down in the capital of Holland and the capital of civilization, Amsterdam. Compared with other European capitals, Amsterdam is tiny. Just three quarters of a million friendly people packed into not quite enough space. It's a city on a very human scale and still has something of the feel of the village that the original inhabitants created when they dammed the Amstel River. The good stuff starts right here at Schiphol Airport, frequently voted best airport in Europe by frequent flyers. Amsterdam is a city of great diversity and so too is the airport. You could spend an entire trip here. There's so many shops, restaurants and other entertainments. A work of art. No, not me. The outpost of the Rijksmuseum that's right here at the airport. From the airport, you can reach the centre in half an hour or less and check in to the latest stylish addition to accommodation options, the Andaz Hotel, formerly the City Library. Hello. There's no reception desk, just the coolest people in Amsterdam equipped with iPads to check you in. Andaz is part of a chain, but each hotel is individually designed. The design of the hotel is actually thought behind polarities about different polarities meeting, that historical melting pot where culture's been coming together, cultures that maybe don't bound paper mixed, but the city makes them mix and clash a bit. Would you like to see a room? I've never seen a hotel room like this before. It turns your whole idea of what a room should be upside down. The Andaz is on the edge of Amsterdam's most intriguing shopping district. If you're looking for a cheesy souvenir or indeed all kinds of things you didn't realise you needed, then come here to the Nine Streets area. Basically, it's a block of Amsterdam with three streets there and three there. And it's full of all kinds of retail treats. Rarely do you find stores promoting dental hygiene and cutting-edge fashion in such close proximity. But Amsterdam doesn't follow convention, whether you're shopping or hopping around town. 400 years ago, the plan for Amsterdam was laid out, involving concentric canals which gave the city its marvellous human scale. And the best way to see it, of course, is by bus, a water bus. Work started on the canal ring 400 years ago to create a city that's basically a collection of islands divided by the canals that ripple out from the core and united by bridges. There are nearly as many bicycles as people in Amsterdam, Europe's highest concentration of bike ownership, and a bicycle allows you to become part of the pulse of the city and explore beyond the centre. Everyone likes a secret corner of a city, and my hidden Amsterdam is the Western Islands, this patchwork of canals and warehouses that's cut off from the rest of the city by the main railway line, making it all the more worthwhile exploring. If you just need a little bit of peace in your mind and enjoy the ships and uh, the water, then this is the area. Just pop down under the railway track and enjoy some peace here in the middle of the centre. In Amsterdam, you can step straight from the 21st century into the Dutch Golden Age, the 17th and 18th centuries, when the city became rich powerful and indulgent. I think the secret from Good Brown Cafe is that, that anyone can come in. If you're on your own, or with the two of them, or, or all your women, or all your men, three people the same. In the old days, when were you allowed to smoke in the most of the cafes, when people smoke, the walls and everything, this makes it from the nicotine, it makes it brown. And we keep it there, we don't clean it, that makes it a brown cafe, and it's very old. When night falls and the lights go on, they're mostly red in this part of town. The medieval heart of Amsterdam is synonymous with sleaze, but there is more than sex and drugs. For example, excellent food.
Now that's what I call a square meal. I know you can't quantify quality, but if you could, for panache, looks, texture and taste, four courses for under 50 euros gets four out of four from me. Who needs sex and drugs anyway? If zero euros is more your holiday budget, then step aboard this free ferry across the I River from round the back of Central Station. Every few minutes it sails across to Vatterland, Waterland, a serene area steeped in tradition with a new and exciting cinematic addition. In the frame, a structure that opened in 2012 with a vision to transform the city's waterfront. The full name is I, the new film museum in Amsterdam. It includes four cinemas and all kinds of tricks to entertain and enthrall the eye. But what really draws the eye and the visitors is the cafe with the widescreen view. Of all the handsome churches in Amsterdam, this is the most central to the life of the city and the country. The locals refer to this place not as Vesterkerk, but as Vestertoren, celebrating the highest church spire in the city. In the olden days, this used to be a lookout for burst dams or fires. Today, it's simply the finest view you will get of Amsterdam. The next stage on your spiritual journey involves going through a kind of secret passage into this beautiful garden in the city, the Begeinhof, created for Catholic pious women who cared for the elderly and were themselves cared for by the church. It's a serene escape from the city outside. Crikey! It was all happening here in the 17th century. Holland was dominating the world economically, culturally and horticulturally. Hortus Botanicus began as a herb garden in 1638, but very soon the Dutch East India Company started bringing back strange and exotic plants from around the world. And very soon this place blossomed. We have to say thanks to the Dutch East Indian Company who took along all these plants from all over the world, from all these strange countries out there, um, beautiful flowers, weird plants, just to show them here in Amsterdam to the public and to tell them how it looks like out there. Um, the ironic thing actually is that some of these plants are extinct in the wild at this moment, 400 years later, but are still visible here in the Hortus in Amsterdam. What can you do with one of Europe's greatest art collections, one third of a billion pounds and 10 years? Create a new golden age in the city of Amsterdam. And about time too. When the Rijksmuseum closed in 2003, it was supposed to be for three or four years of refurbishment. It's finally reopened, which means that we can now celebrate the glory of the Dutch golden age in the glory of this beautiful building. The red brick Rijksmuseum, planted just beyond the last arc of the canal ring, houses the world's finest collection of Rembrandts by the man who bestowed the oil painting with such emotion. Picasso said, every painter takes himself for Rembrandt. And the most celebrated work, officially called the shooting company of Captain Franz Banning Cook, is the only painting that's been returned to its original position after the refurbishment. Now I think it's very great. You have, you have now a, a gallery where we can explain the Dutch culture, the Dutch history, with items coming from the fine arts, the decorative arts and the history. So one item explains the other item and this is the reason why, it, why we have synergetic effects in the galleries now. So you step inside the history of Dutch culture. Rembrandt's Night Watch is back in its rightful place at the head of the Gallery of Honour. The rejuvenated Rijksmuseum is back at the heart of Amsterdam. So perhaps it's time that you return to this most creative of cities that decorates the map of Europe so exquisitely. Artistic genius, no, not me, him, Vincent van Gogh, who has some beautiful pictures here 
and an entire museum to himself just up the road. And it's open late if you want to go along on a starry, starry night.